Hark how the bells, sweet silver bells, all seem to say, throw cares away. Christmas is here, bringing good cheer to young and old, meek and the poor. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, that is their song with joyful ring. Good morning, this is Pastor Jason Bratcher, and welcome to Hartford Baptist Church. We're glad that you've decided to join us today in our time of worship unto Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, through singing of praise, sharing our tithes and our offerings, and the reading and preaching of the God-breathed Word of God. We invite you to come to our facility at 415 Liberty Street, Hartford, Kentucky, next to the Community Center. Our traditional service starts at 9 a.m., Blessed Academy, Sunday School, at 10.15 a.m. and our contemporary service starts at 11.15 a.m. The Kingdom Kids Ministry or Children's Church as well as our nursery is provided in our 11.15 a.m. service. The registration table for those ministries is in our education wing and begins at 11 a.m. At Hartford Baptist Church, we're a community of grace serving a community of needs. May God bless you through the services here today. Well, what did you think about the play, folks? Can we give them another hand? <laughs> Praise God. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of folks involved in that with a lot of time that they have put together and working on that. Uh, Miss Rebecca here, as, as Jonathan said earlier, wrote that uh, for us. And I know it was different. We'll just say that. It was very different. You know, and as we, as we look and watch there, we come to church on Sunday on Christmas and we expect to see the manger scene and Mary and Joseph. And I don't know that I have ever expected to come to church and see a WWF wrestling championship belt on somebody. I just, I don't know if I've ever seen that. But we, <laughs> yeah, I see you, Pudge. But, uh, uh, with the message we've seen this morning, I don't know about you, but I was blessed. I was blessed with that this morning. Uh, today, uh, if you got your Bible with you, I do want to read the story of Jesus' birth this morning, Luke chapter 2. If you would stand with me as we honor the reading of God's Word this morning. It says there, in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place while Quirinus was governing Syria, so everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David to be registered along with Mary who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son and she wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Would you pray with me this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, this morning is as we've come together and, and we've met and we've fellowshiped together through a time of breakfast together this morning. Then we come upstairs here, Lord, and, we, and we're together fellowshipping in a time of, uh, of more nourishment. Nourishment of exalting you through this play about the birth of your son. Lord, I pray we, we not miss what this season is. And Lord, this season is about the beginning to the answer and to the truth of our eternities. And Lord, I pray we not miss any point that you have for us here today to learn about who you are. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we pray your presence be known here today through your Holy Spirit in conviction and hearts. Lord, that you would show yourself today in people's lives. That they would see that it's you that makes a difference in their life. 
It's in your precious name I pray. Amen. You may be seated this morning. You know, as we go through uh, the Christmas season, we go through stages of what we call the Advent. And this morning, uh, we're going to, if you see here, the candles are lit for Advent. We light one every week. This week, we're going to light the candle of Advent for love. As we focus our attention on love, the following scripture verse is probably going to be kind of familiar to you, but I'm going to read those to you this morning. From Matthew chapter 22, verse uh, 36 through 40, it says, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second's like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Teacher, which command of God's law is the most important? Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and your intelligence. This is the most important and first of any list. But there is a second to sit alongside it. Love others as well as you love yourself. These two commandments are pegs in everything in God's law. And the prophets, it says, hung on to them. Would you pray with me this morning in our time of Advent? God, we have learned to love from being loved. And that love that we feel is being loved by you. So today, let us uh, begin to enact that love in our life. Let us live that love through our life. We know that what the world needs right now, more than anything else, is love. We need to remember how much that you love each and every one of us. And we need to share that, Lord, that agape love with the world. It's in your name I pray. Amen. You know, as we look at today, uh, I have been all over the place this week with a message. And if you know me, and most of you here have heard me even say this, the days that I hate to preach the most are holidays. Because everybody knows what the preacher's supposed to say. They know what scripture we're going to use. We know, they know the three points in the poem we're going to say. Because it's Christmas. So today, if you've got your Bible, we're going to go to John chapter 3, verses 16 in 17. So there's not a manger in that scripture. Yes, there is. There's not a, a child Christ in that. Yes, it is. John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God loved the world in this way. I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have, ever have eternal life. In verse 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So well, how are you going to get a Christmas message? How are you going to get the birth of Christ out of that? Let me tell you what John 3, 16 and into 17 is. It is the ultimate of Christianity. What is Christianity? Christianity, to be a Christian by definition, is to be Christ-like. John 3.16 is telling us that there is a way for us to be Christ-like. It says, for God so loved the world. And if you've been around me any time, you've probably heard me say this before. But I want you to put your place there. 
Put your name in that place. For God so loved Jason. For God so loved. Put your name right there. Because by definition, that, that, that word world, that means everybody. Everyone. And listen to this for just a minute. Everybody and everyone in the world is not saved. Everybody in the world has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yet, the love of God is for you as well. So if you're here this morning and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, put your heart into the hands of Jesus Christ. He loves you. Not just the saved. Not just the ones that go to church. But everybody. The sinners alike. So it says, for God so loved me. So God so loved everybody. That he gave his only begotten son. Jesus Christ. Who is God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one. Jesus Christ says, I, I gave him. You say, well, well, Jesus Christ, he was born about a little over 2,000 years ago, right? No. Jesus Christ has been around since the beginning of creation. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and, and the Word was God. The Word is Jesus Christ. He's been here from the beginning. He, God just allowed him to become what we call incarnate or flesh so that he could show us <coughs> that attainment of purity, attainment of purification and perfection can be had in this human flesh. This Jesus Christ is God. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So God loved you and you and me so much that that night in that manger, in that, in that inn, in that stable, he was born, taken out of the deity of heaven himself to save you. Not worthy of it. But he came that night, incarnate, in the flesh, bringing himself down to the level of that which he had created in order to save that which he created. And what he created was you. In his image. That's what it says in Genesis. It says, God created man in his image. To be like him. To attain to be like him. And we failed. As humanity we failed. So what did he do? He sent his son to take our place to pay for our sins. And he says all you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your mediator. As your savior. As your messiah. Believe in him and do as he gave unto you through example. You know, that's one awesome thing about our God. He came here on this earth, lived through the things that you and I lived through. He went through, hey, teenagers, he went through peer pressure. He went through the trials of, hey, man, try this, it won't hurt you. Man, he went through the trials of lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. Women. He went through all the things that we go through every day and he never succumbed to them. To give us the example to be like. But first we have to accept him. But the scripture goes on and says, For God so loved the world and gave his only begotten son. Oh, here we go. Whosoever believeth in him. Whosoever. Does that mean church going people that believe in him does that mean that the, the Jews of the day that believe in him it says no now it used to be before Jesus Christ that the Israelite people were the chosen let me tell you today God chooses you 
through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the atonement of Jesus Christ, He chooses you. If, as the scripture there in John 3, 16 says, if we'll just believe in Him. Whosoever believeth in me should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now don't get this mixed up. You become a Christian doesn't mean you're going to live forever and be immortal in this body. What it means is, is we're never going to have the spiritual death of separation from God and go to hell. We're going to continue that relationship with God eternally in heaven. He's talking about the spiritual death. Whoever believeth in me should not perish, but have everlasting life. Wow. Not to be separated. And, and you, I know most of you sitting here have heard me talk about what hell really, really means. You take the, the full uh, interpretation of what hell is. Basically, hell is nothing more than separation from God. Now we want to talk about fire and, and brimstone and, and, and torture and all those things. But that's nothing compared to separation from God. Look around you to your left, to your right. There's people probably sitting with you that you ha are attached to, have emotions for, love, married to, have all these emotions. Guess what? God is love. God is love. Can you imagine being separated from the emotions you have for that person to your right or your left? That's separation from God. That's separation from God. And what I'm here to tell you today is, church, saved, unsaved, until you have that relationship with Jesus Christ, one day there will be separation. There will be death. And with that comes Satan's angels. Satan's demons and hell. Jesus Christ came in that manger. Incarnate. To save us from that. You know I hear a lot of people a lot of times when I ask them are you saved? And they say what do I need to be saved from? Everybody take it back your hands and look at it. That's what you need to be saved from. Yourself. Because our self is corrupt. Our self is sinful. It's only through the atoning blood of the cross that we can be saved. And never live that death that he's talking about there in John 3, 16. So this morning, where are you at with that? Have you accepted that from Jesus Christ? Because let me look. Let's go on to verse 17, which I read just a moment ago. And it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus Christ didn't come here to tell you how bad a person you are. Jesus Christ didn't come to tell you what it is you don't deserve from him. What we have to do is we have to discern in our spirit that we're not worthy. We have to discern in our spirit that we're not right and we haven't got it right. Because the Lord didn't come here to do that to me and you. He came here to save us. But until you and I realize we don't deserve it, until you and I realize that we're sinful, that we're not perfect, and that we have to have Jesus Christ in order to attain perfection and righteousness in the eyes of God, we will never succumb to the superiority and the preeminence of Jesus Christ. This morning, there's three steps to salvation. Really simple. You have to realize, first of all, I'm not perfect. Boy, it's hard for some of us to, to accept, isn't it? We may know it, but we just don't want to say it. We're not perfect, and I don't deserve the gift that Christ has for me. I don't. But through the blood of Jesus Christ, he offers it to me. You know, I use the illustration a lot of times. I don't have one on me, a piece of candy with a little kid when I'm talking to him about salvation. I'll take that candy and I'll say, I've got this piece of candy for you. And I'm going to give this to you. And do you believe that this candy is yours? And they say, yeah. I said, but there's one 
thing that has to happen. You got to reach out and take it. Oh, you can believe it's there. We can be sitting here this morning. We can believe who Jesus is. We can believe what Jesus Christ has done for us. And we can believe what we need to do to attain eternity and salvation with Jesus Christ and God in heaven. But until we make the move and we reach out and we take possession of that, it's still just a belief and there's no faith in it. So first of all, we've got to understand, we're not perfect, but we need to, the second part is, is we need to believe it. We need to believe that Jesus is who he says he is. We need to believe that he can do for me what I, what I need to do. But also I need to believe that it takes an act of my free will and accord to reach out and take it. He's offering it. Will you accept it? Will you believe it? Will you reach out and grab that this morning? And there's one last step. Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells us that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, I want you to get this part. I want you to let this resonate right here. It says, we will be saved. It doesn't say if you attend 80% of the church services in the year, you'll be saved. It doesn't say that if you make the walk and you get baptized and you become a Sunday school teacher and then you... It didn't say that. It says if you will accept Jesus Christ and confess with your mouth. What does that mean, confess with your mouth? That means let it be known your intentions of serving Christ. More commonly than not, we stand before the church and we make the announcement that we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So if we just figure out that we're not worthy of it we're messed up people but we got to put our faith into Jesus Christ because of everything he has done for us starting with the the incarnation of Christ in the manger just that is astounding that he would come from the deity of heaven to bring himself to be as lowly as you and me the creatures of which he created we just got to believe that he's did all of this for you and for me. Why? Because we couldn't do it for ourselves. We weren't capable. He's standing in the gap. He is being that mediator between you and the Father. He says, accept me. Accept me. So this Christmas season, is this the season... That you say, hey, I need to know more about that baby in the manger. That man on the cross. The savior of the world, which I'm a part of. Is this the Christmas season? You say, hey, I need to find out more about that. Maybe it's the season you say, well, I need to make a commitment. I need to believe. I need to accept that in my life and I need to get started implementing that into my life. If that's the case here in just a few minutes, we're going we're gonna to have a little bit of a, a time of invitation. I want to ask you to come. Oh, it's just Christmas. We, we, we got Christmas plays. and we got. Let me tell you what Christmas is about. It's about Jesus Christ and Him saving the world. If you're here this morning you don't know Him, it's an urgency for you this morning. There is an urgency for you this morning. If you don't know Jesus, I plead with you. I plead with you this morning. Rebecca, would you come and play? I plead with you this morning. Would you come accept Jesus Christ? Would you come? Would you come? She begins to play. This altar is open. Would you stand with us this morning at a time of invitation? If you need prayer this morning for something going on in your life, would you come? Let us pray with you. Let us encourage you. As we read there from the scripture for love, love one another. Love one another. Let us show you love this morning. Maybe there's something in your life you're just struggling with this morning. You don't even have to share with me what it is. Just let me know you're struggling. Let some of us come together this morning. Lift you up before the Lord. bow your heads close your eyes 
Maybe this morning you're secure with where you're at in your salvation. Praise God if you are. But maybe if you are, you know somebody that's not. What an awesome gift for this season is to stand here this morning and pray for them that the Holy Spirit would begin to convict in their very heart drawing them to Christ not to a church, not to a denomination but unto Jesus Christ with every head bowed, every eye closed this morning I'm going to ask you so I can pray specifically is there someone in your life or is there something in your life this morning that you need to bring before the Lord if you would, would you raise your hand so we can pray for that thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you Thank you. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we just saw hands go up across the sanctuary this morning, or whether they be for salvation this morning for themselves, maybe it's salvation for someone in, in, their, in their life that is close to them, or maybe there's an issue going on in their very life, whether it be physical, financial, or whatever, relational, whatever it may be this morning, Lord. I know that you know every one of those hands this morning. Those that did not raise a hand this morning, Lord, I know you know what's going on in their hearts as well. Lord, I lift this up. I lift up a body in this church this morning unto you. Lord, I pray you have your way. And I pray, Lord, that as, as you begin to guide and direct us through the, the, through the melancholy of this world, through the chaos of our lives, Lord, sometimes through the chaos of church life, Lord, I pray that you would guide us that you would lead us and that you would show us your path. And I pray that those hands that went up would be open, looking and desiring for your direction. I pray for corrections. I pray for salvations. But Lord, my, my main prayer this morning is that those here in this place that are seeking after you in whatever direction, Lord, that they would see you show up and they would see you show out in the midst of their situations. And Lord, I pray as we see and as we observe that, that we give you all the glory, all the praise. Lord, I thank you for this time we've had here this morning. And I pray, Lord, that as each and every one of us stand this morning, as we begin to, Lord, begin to uh, worship together, all my hope. Lord, I pray that all of our hope is in you, Lord. None of our hope be stuck in this world. Well, I pray we don't have hope in our government like we have hope in our God. I pray we don't have hope in our spouse like we have hope in our God. I pray we don't have hope in the Christmas season like we have the hope of the Spirit of God in ourselves this morning. Lord, we exalt you. And I pray you have your way. Open hearts, soften hearts this morning. We give this all unto you in the name of your precious Son. Amen. Worship with us this morning.
this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Christmas, no sing we sing our grateful praises to the babe so dear. Sing we well. the King is born sing we know. Thank you once again for joining us here today in worship at Hartford Baptist Church. We here at Hartford Baptist Church are a community of grace, serving a community of needs through Christ our Lord. Join us on our website at hartfordbaptistchurch.org or call us at 270-298-3701. Sunday morning worship is at 9 and 11.15 a.m. Sunday evening, Children's Church from 4 to 5.30 p.m. And Wednesday night Bible study for our adults, children's ministry, as well as our youth meet at 6.30 p.m. Church bus transportation is provided for all of these. Please call 270-287-3700. Zero one to set up a pickup for our church van. Have a blessed week and may the joy of the Lord shine round and about you.